In this tutorial, we're going to create all the toolpaths to machine the five star coffee sign you see on the screen. We will start by opening up the vectors created in the previous vector drawing tutorial that can be accessed as one of the related videos on this web page. So we'll start with closing down this part and now opening an existing file. In this case, we will pick the five star coffee vector drawing.crv file and we'll now be presented with the new part with the vectors that have been previously created. So if we have a little look at the layer drop down just to see exactly what we have here, if we switch them all off first and work our way through them, we have of course the bitmap that was used to create the original sort of coffee shape in the center. We have the outline that we will need in order to create uh, both the cutout but also some of the V carving. We have some construction lines that we use in part of the vector drawing project but also the text and the stars and of course the center graphic that was generated from the bitmap. So with that now I'm going to move across uh, from the drawing menu across to the toolpathing menu. So I'm just going to toggle across now and immediately we'll need to uh, decide what's going to be happening with the material setup. So as I open this up now we can see our thickness is uh, three quarters of an inch. Our XY datum is currently in the center. Now that was placed in the center for ease of mirroring text and creating all the vectors, etc. So for machining, I'm going to have this in the lower left hand corner so I can modify this after the fact for machining. And that's shown by a change of the datum position now showing in the lower left hand corner of the workpiece. Our Z0 will be from the material surface and I'm happy with the rapid and home positions. So with that, I'm just going to OK that now. And we're going to look now to start creating the main V carving toolpath. And we're going to explore different options with different tools just to see the effect and also the importance of the simulation and being able to visualize exactly how that's going to look when you come to machine it. So with this now, I'm going to select all the vectors on the screen with Control A on the keyboard. So Control A, but I'm just going to use the Shift key now just to deselect the external vector. So essentially, I'm selecting all the vectors, but the actual external perimeter. So we're going to come across now and pick up the V carving toolpath. OK, so with this now, we are faced with a number of parameters. And the first thing to set is the cutting depth. Now we're going to start from the top of the block zero. And I'm not going to specify a flat depth. Essentially, I'm going to allow the uh, chamfered angle on the V carving toolpath to naturally find uh, the depth depending upon the thickness between the vectors. OK, so we now need to decide on the tool we're going to use. So in this case, um, I think I'm going to look really at a shallower option first. So I'm going to pop this up now and we can see our V bit tools listed here. And currently we have 160 degree and 290 degree bits. Uh, but I really would like to use a 120 degree bit just to create a little bit more of a shallower effect. So in order to do that, I need to add a tool in. So what I'm doing is selecting an existing tool, um, in this case, one that's quite close to the parameters that we need. And I'm going to come back down to the bottom of the uh, tool database and just copy that tool. So I'm going to copy that now, which has created a new tool here. It's shown as gray because we've not completed all the parameters for this particular tool. I'm going to come across to the right hand side now and I would like to change the angle. So I'm going to change that from 90 to 120. And notice the name has automatically updated to reflect this. And then as I come down to the bottom, I need to decide um, from which tool I would like to extract the original parameters from. Now I'm going to take the original 90 degree, one and a quarter inch V bit tool and just copy the pass depth, step over, speeds and feeds and apply that. Now immediately on the screen is a message that's telling me that based upon that sort of shallower angle, I can't cut to the same depth as the 90 degree. Okay, I must cut each pass at a lower depth of either 0.361 inches or less. So with that, I'm going to just come into the pass depth here and lower this down to 0.35, okay? So with that, I'm gonna apply that now and select that tool. So it's created it in the database and now I'm gonna select it for this particular toolpath. I'm now gonna come down and just to change the name just to VCarve and we'll go ahead and calculate that toolpath. So we're presented now in the 3D view where we can see this toolpath on the screen. 
Now, what's really nice about the simulation is it takes essentially a very simple toolpath and allows us to visualize it to see the dynamic effect it will give when we come to machine it. So I'm just going to play that now through the preview and we can see immediately the uh, type of toolpath that we're going to be creating. Now, it's if I reset that and just slow that down a little bit and play that again, we'll see the tool actually cutting through there and we can see that being created. And I'm just going to sort of rotate this round and we can start to appreciate the changing in depths depending upon the thickness of the vector. So we can see if we take, for instance, the coffee sign in the center, where we've got narrow vectors on the handle there, we've got a shallower depth, but of course, as it comes to the base where it meets the cup, it's, we've got greater depth because the width of the vectors is wider. And similarly on the coffee cup here, we've got quite a wide region here, therefore we're getting a greater depth. Now, in this particular case, using a shallow angle of 120 degrees for the tool may be ideal, for instance, for gilding, uh, where we would get um, a greater pickup of the material since it's a shallower depth. And of course, we're liable to get a greater reflection from the uh, gold leaf as well. But in this case, I'm not going to be using that. I'd like to explore really going in with a deeper tool. OK, so with that, I'm going to come across now and just close out of the preview and then double click on the toolpath to bring me back to the original parameters I used. And I'm going to come back to the tool. So I'm going to select my a new tool from the tool database. So I'm going to come down now and maybe select something like a 60 degree. So I'm going to select that now and pick that up and all I need to do is recalculate don't need to do anything more and I have a new toolpath displayed on the screen uh, where there are multiple passes because we are using a smaller tool and I need to now simulate that but given the fact that uh, we're going to be cutting further down than what the current tool is creating then I don't need to reset the preview I can just play this on top so I'm just going to sort of turn this down a little bit and we'll play that through so that's cutting into that now and you can see that we've got definitely increased depth okay with that so let's take a, a closer look now and we can see that we really do have much greater depth throughout but maybe this is a little bit too severe okay you can see there particularly with the s we're getting really deep and we're getting deep even in relatively shallow regions so i think we need to sort of come out of this and maybe think about using a sort of a balance between the 120 degree and the 60 which could be 90. so i'm going to close that out now double click on the toolpath come back up to the tool and select the 90 degree uh, tool the one and a quarter inch and just select that and then come down and recalculate the toolpath okay so i'm going to reset the preview now and we'll just play that through and at this stage i think that's a good happy medium there that we've got with that 90 degree tool we've got it a little bit deeper in the shallow regions but it's not gone too deep where vectors are particularly wide apart so i think that's a, a happy solution there so next we need to consider the um, cutout around the outside of this particular sign so i'm going to close out from that form come back to the 2d view and just select the outer border now I'm going to come back to our set of toolpaths and in this case I'm going to be using a profile toolpath. Now our cut depth is going to be the full depth. If we didn't know what that was we could have typed Z equals on the keyboard and that will automatically extract the full thickness of the material being used. Um, and with respect to tools um, I'm going to be using this uh, quarter inch end mill here so I'm just going to select that from the database and we need to specify whether we're going to be machining this inside, outside or on. In this case, it's going to be outside. And then further down, I could add tabs, but in this case, my sign is either stuck down or we are using a vacuum form bed. So I'm not worried about adding tabs. Therefore, I'm not worried about having um, a complete gap between my sign and the remaining material. So coming down now, I'm just going to change that name to cutout and we'll go ahead and calculate that. So we've moved directly across into the 3D view. You can see the multiple passes based upon our harder material that we're using here. So we need multiple passes with this particular tool. And I'm now just going to preview that. So we're going to press play. 
which will cut that out. Okay, and we're faced with this quite unique five star coffee sign. Uh, we can see here that our waste material is not connected to our sign. So I can easily remove that by just double clicking on it. And we're left with just the sign on the screen. Now, based on the fact that I may be sending this uh, to a customer, it might be nice to give them a couple of different visuals to see maybe some of the coloration that he might want on the sign. So if we actually come up to the uh, preview, we can drop down and either select a different uh, material, okay? Or we can, at the very top, maybe even select a solid color. So, okay, so I'm gonna use a solid color here. And actually, I'm gonna pick, rather than the yellow, I'm gonna pick like a dark gray. And then we can look to maybe uh, specify a color with the VCarve toolpath, okay? So I'm gonna select the VCarve from the toolpath list, come up to the toolpath color, and maybe specify this as say a yellow, okay? So we've got quite a nice visual on the screen. Now, if I wanted to save that out, I can just say save preview image, and I'm gonna give this now um, a new name. So this is gonna be called image one, and I'll save that out. And now maybe I want to explore some slightly different options. I'm going to come back up and rather than using a solid color, I think I would prefer to use wood material. So in this case, I'm going to go back to our Canadian maple, but I'm going to move away from the sort of yellow uh, coloration for the V carving and go in for a dark gray. So I think that's quite a nice combination. So I'm going to say save preview image again. And in this case, I'm going to save this as image two. Okay, so I'll just change that out and save that. So we've saved a couple of images and of course we can forward those on to the customer uh, in order to give them a couple of different options to choose from. Okay, so the next stage, once we've found out that we are gonna be cutting this, we need to maybe move forward and start looking to create the G-code. So I'm gonna close out from the form and come across to the save toolpaths. We only have two toolpaths here. They would have to be separate toolpaths if we weren't using a tool changer as these are using different tools. You can see that the first one is already selected in the list. So I can just say save toolpaths based upon the post processor that we're using and then select the cutout toolpath and go ahead and save that as a separate G code file too. Of course, the post processor and the setup will be unique to your own machine. So I'm just gonna close this down now and look to save the part. So I'm gonna come up to File, Save As, and we're gonna be saving this as the 2.5D tool pass. So I'm gonna save that now, and we can come back and reopen this part and repost out the G-code files at a later point.